Howdy everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Character Creation Continuation. And this particular continuation deals with Dritzden, our Hildwarf Level 1 Life Cleric. Now, Dritzden, in the first video, we placed our stat points, talked about the Universal Proficiency Bonus, we chose our equipment, we chose our first level spells, placed our hit points, we chose our personality traits, our background, our ideals, our bonds, our flaws. And basically took care of everything that we needed to take care of for a level 1 Hill Dwarf Life Cleric. Now, this video is going to deal with going from level 2 to level 5, and we'll do everything in between systematically, so you at home will know everything you need to do to level a Life Cleric. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to take Dritzton to level 2. And experience points for level 2 is 300 total. And the one thing that I do want to talk about uh, Dritzton is I, I changed several things since the first video. The first video I did a 15, 15, 15, uh, 10, 10, 10, 27 point buy. Well, uh, I had a brain fart there, and it should have been 15, 15, 15, 8, 8, 8. And I have changed it, uh, also amended the first video uh, to correct my mistake, uh, and I have also changed all of the uh, modifiers for saving throws, skill checks. Uh, I also went ahead, instead of doing a 15 dexterity, uh, I was going to do a basically a finesse build, but I've decided to go against that, uh, and I've decided to switch dexterity for strength. So now he is a strength-based cleric, which will uh, be a lot better for Warhammer and other you know strength-based weapons. Uh, so that, those are pretty much the only two major changes that I've made to Dritzden, and he will uh, stay the same from here on out to level 20. So, okay, we've got our level 2 cleric started. He's got 300 experience now. Uh, let's go ahead and change our hit points. We will get... Uh, your DM can do one of two things. Make you roll 1d8, because the clerics get a d8. Or you can take the static 5. In my games, I allow the players to either do a d8 roll or, you know, take the flat 5. It's... You know, some dungeon masters, he or she, they'll probably make you, you know, roll. But in my games, I'm very flexible about that. So let's go ahead and take our hit points. We're going to take the 5 plus the 3 from our con. And don't forget, we're going to get an additional plus 1 hit point a level for being a heal dwarf. So we are going to get 9 hit points a level, which is pretty good. This will take us to a total of 21 hit points for level 2. We'll also have 2 hit dice heals. And uh, hit dice heals are basically exactly what they say. Uh, you get a short rest, which is one hour in D&D &D 5e, and once you have successfully had a one hour rest, then you can expect the number of hit dice that you have. You get one hit dice heal per level of your character. So, Dritzen's level 2, we can heal twice out of combat for 1d8 plus 3. You know, example, you get to level 10, you can do it 10 times. Now, whenever you get a long rest, you can get back half of your expended half of your expended uh, hit dice heals. So if we use both of our hit dice heals here at level 2, then whenever we get a long rest, we will only get one back. Another example, level 10, you've expended all 10, you'll only get five back. So a lot of people don't know about that little rule. Okay, so we've got our hit points. Let's go ahead and systematically start going over every single little thing uh, about the cleric. At level level 2, you can see our proficiency bonus is going to stay the same. It's not going to change until level 5, so we won't be changing this until the very end of this tutorial video. Uh, we are going to get several features for being a cleric, and the first one is called Channel Divinity. And this is pretty much a... Uh, this is a really nice class feature that all clerics get, not only the life cleric. This is baseline anyway. But also, depending on which archetype that you choose, like we chose the Life Cleric, you will get a, uh, a special, you know, archetype-only type of Channel Divinity. 
and we're going, we're fixing to uh, we're fixing to get that. So you can see Channel Divinity. We can only use it once right now, but as we level our cleric, we'll be able to use it uh, more and more. Now this is uh, Channel Divinity is the the Channel Divinity skill is nothing but the name of the mechanic. But there are also skills that you're going to get. Like I said, the first one that we're going to get uh, is Turn Undead. Now Turn Undead is exactly the way it sounds. I mean, we get this at, at level two. So we're going to keep all of our skills nice and organized. We we want to keep this. We want to keep these organized. All right. So you can see, turn undead. This is where you basically cause all undead within 30 feet of you to make a Wisdom saving throw or be turned for one minute, which in combat, one minute would translate to 10 rounds, six seconds around. Now, you know, whenever they do fail their saving throw, or if they fail their saving throw, they will run away from you and try to get as far away from you as possible. Now, if they cannot get away from you any further, then they will automatically, by default, take the uh, dodge action, and that'll basically, you know, be their turn. But they'll also, when they're running away from you, they'll also take the dash action to try to get away from you. All right, so that's the level two. That's your cleric baseline channel divinity. Now we get a channel divinity feature also for being a life cleric, and this divine. This is called. What is it called? Preserve life, I think it's called. Yes, it is. This is called preserve life. Preserve life is actually pretty nice. Now, what Preserve Life does is basically, as your action, you will have a base pool of healing. And the pool is five times your Cleric level. Now, we're level two, so we're going to have a ten hit point pool that we can Preserve Life to other players. And you can give these players this pool of hit points, like I said, up to five times your maximum level. So if you know your fighters down 10 hit points you can give him those 10 hit points but the one stipulation to use in preserve life is you cannot give more than half the targets maximum hit points to him so it's not like you can take him from almost dead to full life you can only give them half of their maximum hit points as a heal still really nice though i mean it's it's nothing to balk about it's it's a really strong class feature okay so our level 2 class features are discussed. Nothing else is going to change. We are going to gain uh, no cantrips. We will gain one more first level spell slot, taking us to 3. Uh, our wisdom uh, spell save DC will not change. Our spell attack will not change. Now we will gain one more spell because we gain a number of spells for our spell pool. We talked about that in the first tutorial, what spell pools were compared to spell slots, compared to domain spells. So we will get a number of spells equal to our wisdom modifier plus our cleric level. So we will gain one more because we gained a level. So for first level spells, let's go ahead and take a... I would think bless would be pretty good to take. We don't have bless yet. And I'm going full utility with this cleric. It's a life cleric, it's obvious, so I'm going to go bless. Okay, so that should give us uh, our wisdom modifier is 3, our cleric level is 2. We should have a total of 5 spells plus our 2 domain spells that do not count, so we should have a total of 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then cure wounds and oh, bless was our domain, so I don't need bless. What was I thinking? Let's grab another one. I probably I might take Bane. Well, I've already got Bane too. Let's go with Detect Magic. All right. So there we go. That's it for level two. We are in the books for level two. Let's go ahead and save our character sheet. 
Now let's go to level 3 Life Cleric. Level 3 Life Cleric is going to require 900 EXP. So congratulations, Dritston. You are level 3. Now let's check our proficiency. It's still the same at level 2. We will not get any class features whatsoever at level 3. So let's go ahead and take a look at our magic. We will get uh, another first level spell slot. So this is going to take us to a total of four first level spells. And we will also gain two second level spells. So now we are able to cast second level spells. Now we need to choose. We get one more spell. We, we are going to get one more spell to our pool because we gained another level. So let's go to the second level cleric spells and let's let's go ahead and choose let's take hold person hold person is a great spell it's a great utility spell all right so there we go now also you're gonna wanna check your domain spells also because remember every one of your archetypes has a free flavor of spells uh, for your uh, archetype that you choose. So for our archetype, the life domain, uh, we are going to go ahead and put hold person down here. Now remember what I said in the first video, your domain spells do not affect the total number of spells that you know. So you're always going to have a pool of spells to use. Wisdom, modifier, plus your cleric level your domain spells stack on top of that. So for level three, we are gonna get lesser de uh, lesser restoration and spiritual weapon. So let's go with a, uh, wow, it's already tagged for us. And let's go with spear, ritual hammer, which is actually a really fun spell to use as a cleric. And there we go. So we actually gained three spells. So that is everything. Our spell save DC does not change again. Our spell attack does not change. So it looks like we are done with level three. So let's go ahead and save our character sheet. So it's really not bad. It's really not bad. We need to go ahead and change our hit points so before we go into level four. So let's go to three hit dice heals. Remember, we're gonna gain the five flat plus three plus one because of our racial so our total of nine that will take us to a total of 30 hit points at level three nothing else will change so we're in good shape all right let's save it let's go to level four life cleric we're cruising right along here aren't we i believe uh, level 4 is 2700 xp let me check my chart real quick it is it is 2700 exp Pretty, uh, pretty nice when you start memorizing all these numbers, isn't it? Okay, for f level four, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get no adjustment to our proficiency bonus, so don't worry about that, everyone. We are gonna get our first ability score improvement, and our first ability score improvement, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the points. We're not gonna take any, you know, we're not gonna take a feat. In fact, I don't think we're gonna take a feat at all. So let's go ahead and over here, uh, let's call this ASI for Ability Score Improvement. So let's take a look at our stats. We've got two odd numbers here that I'd like to get to even. So we're going to take our Strength to 16 and we're going to take our Constitution 18. We're not going to take our Constitution any higher than 18. Uh, so instead of taking a special Constitution, uh, I figure we'll go ahead and knock two birds out with one stone and take, you know, one Ability Score Improvement roll uh, raise up both stats. I, I want. I still want to raise strength to 20, and I still want to raise wisdom to 20. So we're going to need all five of these ability score improvements. So this life cleric is going to have pretty decent fighting, uh, but I'm mainly doing it for the the high spell save DC, the the high spell attack, and the option to have good uh, attack with a melee weapon. So let's go ahead, take our Constitution 18. When we do that we're going to go to a plus four modifier. And then when we go to a 16 strength, that's going to take us to a plus three. So we actually gained two modifiers for two different stats, which is really good. And that's the reason why I did this, is because I'm actually gaining on two important stats that I need. So over here, I'm going to put a plus one to strength. 
and uh, plus one to con. And I'm not taking con up any any higher than 18. So by default, we're automatically going to go ahead and adjust our saving throws because we now have a plus three in strength, and then our constitution is going to go to plus four. Now we need to change our strength, uh, the only strength check here, which is athletics. So that'll go to three. So that's going to totally be easy. Now let's go ahead and now that we're level four, let's change our level four hit points, which will go to four. And then remember, we get nine hit points around. Now, take into consideration our constitution changed. So we're level four. We gained another four. We gained, you know, four more hit points. So now instead of 39, we're going to backtrack. So for levels one, two, three, four, we get one more extra hit point. So we're going to go to a total of 43 hit points. And don't forget, we're not getting nine hit points anymore around. We're now getting an even 10 hit points around really nice so we've gained quite a bit of HP alright so we're done with that remember strength when you raise your strength it raises all strength based uh, weapons and seeing that we're proficient in the warhammer and the the light hammer for throwing that will take our proficiency to a plus five to hit and now a plus three to hit. Now remember, like I said in the first video, you do not add your proficiency to damage. You only add proficiency to hit. That's it. Okay, so I think we took care of everything that has to deal with our strength and constitution ability score improvements. We took care of our saving throws. We took care of our skills. We took care of our hit points. We took care of the modification from constitution, from our ability score improvement. We took care of our attacks, we took care of our damage. It looks like uh, I think we're about it. I think we are. I think we're about done. Let's take a look at our spells now. Uh, I believe that we will gain some more spells. So, for level four, uh, we will gain another cantrip, which is nice. So we're we're gonna add another another cantrip here for cleric. Let's go ahead and take Guidance. Guidance is really nice to give a, uh, a nice boost to your party. So now we have Guidance. Also at level 4, we are not gaining any more first level spell slots. The maximum is 4. We're already at that point. We will gain one more second level spell slot, taking us to 3 and we will also gain another spell because our maximum did go up one level. So let's take another nice second level spell. Let's take... I would say let's take Lesser Restoration. That's a... Uh, no, actually we've got that I believe for... Yes we do. We can go with Aid. Aid is a decent spell also. Good utility to it. So there we go. Now we have our extra spell. We've got our upgraded third level spell slot. We're not going to worry about any of this here, not until next level. All right, so it looks like fourth level is complete. Let's go ahead and save it. Now five is going to be a great level for us. All right, so now Dritzen is level five. I believe XP is 6,500 now, 6,500 experience. Congratulations. Remember, we're not getting nine hit points anymore we're getting ten so now we are at 53 hit points at level five that is really nice that's really nice we also have five out of combat hit dice heals so don't forget to add that also now for level five we're gonna get several things we're gonna get spells we're gonna get a feature and we also get a proficiency bonus upgrade so let's go ahead and take care of our proficiency upgrade first it's gonna affect multiple things so you know like I said in the first video proficiency bonus is universal it's in every single class in D&D 5e so it affects multiple things the first thing that it affects are your saving throws and your skill checks that you're proficient in so let's go ahead and raise all these by one. So we have a plus six wisdom saving throws because of our modifiers plus three and our proficiency bonus is three. That's how we get to plus six. 
All right. All of these other proficiencies, we're just going to go ahead and raise by one. Very easy. Don't forget to do this, folks. A lot of people forget to do this, and they sell their characters short. And you could actually, your character could die from this. I mean, it really could. Next, we want to worry about, remember, proficiency bonus also affects your weapons that you're proficient in for your to hit. So now, at level 5, our Warhammer is plus 6, and our Throwing Hammers are plus 6. How cool is that uh, to have at level 5? That's really nice. Now, the last thing that we're, that we're going to be affected by the proficiency is we're going to add 1 to our Spell Save DC and our Spell Attack bonus. Remember, Spell Save DC is 8 plus your proficiency, which is 3 for 11, plus your Wisdom is 14. And then your Spell Attack bonus to attack with certain spells that need an attack would be your proficiency plus wisdom modifier and it is different for all casting classes so you'll have to check on whatever stat that you have for you know whatever class you're playing alright so level five we are now going to get destroy undead and destroy undead is actually a really really cool this is actually a really cool uh, class feature I like it I like how they expanded upon the channel divinity this isn't channel divinity well it, it is channel divinity uh, but it, it actually just kind of adds on uh, on top of it so whenever you use uh, you know channel divinity destroy undead you're gonna have a certain challenge rating and I'm gonna go into this right now you're gonna have a, a, a certain challenge rating Basically, when an undead fails its saving throw against your turn undead feature for your channel divinity, the creature is instantly destroyed if the challenge rating is at or below a certain threshold. And uh, there is also a uh, nice little chart on page 99 in the player's handbook. And this is also uh, in the basic rules, the free basic rules from the Wizards of the Coast website. So you can also check it out on that free PDF. Now, seeing that we're fifth level, Destroy Undead will automatically destroy any challenge rating of one half or lower. So, you know, those, che those little cheesy half or one quarter, you know, CR skeletons will automatically poof, just van vanish from radiant, from radiant damage. And as you get level, as you get a higher level, your CR is going to go up. So at level 8, it's going to change to a 1. At level 11, it's going to change to a 2. At uh, level 14, it's going to change to a 3 challenge rating. And then finally, the last is level 17 at a challenge rating 4. So you will be able to pretty much destroy a lot of undead. I mean, you're not going to be able to poof instantly destroy a lich, but uh, you're going to be able to destroy just about the, the large variety of all the undead, which uh, that's why I really like destroy undead. Okay, so destroy undead... Uh, our DC is one half. We'll we'll change this as we get uh, as we get higher. Okay. So that is uh, everything we get at level five for features. We don't get anything else. Now the last thing that we're going to get, uh, we need to check our spells. We want to make sure we're keeping up with our spells, and not selling ourselves short on that. So now that we're level five. Uh, we are going to keep the same amount of cantrips. We don't gain any more cantrips for quite a while. Uh, we don't gain any more first level spell slots. We don't gain any more second level spell slots. However, we do now have the ability to cast third level spells. So, we get to cast two third level spells. And we get to choose a third level spell because now that we've gone up another level, our spell pool increases by one. So for third level spells, let's take a look at these. I do like Beacon of Hope. I will probably take uh, the first third level spell that I'll take, seeing that I am more healing base as a Light Cleric, I'm going to take Mass Healing Word, which basically will heal multiple players. So let's take a Mass Healing Word. Now let's let's also not forget you also get your level 5 class you know for your life domain you're also gonna get some uh, some spells also so let's take a look at those so we're gonna get beacon of hope and revivify for free 
So those are going to be our domain spells. So those are basically, you know, free on top of everything else. So Beacon of Hope. Wow, it's already typed in. And Revivify. Let's see if that one. Nope. Revivify. And that is a domain. And I always put capital letters domain to make sure that, uh, you know, those are free spells. I don't have to worry about that. Now under that, let's go ahead and take a mass healing word. So we, instead of gaining one, we technically really gain three spells. All right. Now that's it for level five. It looks like we've got everything. Let's double check everything. We've got uh, our five out of hit dice heals. We've got our hit points. We took care of all of our proficiency stuff already at level four. We've got uh, all of our features from one to five. All of our spell slots are adjusted save DC attack bonus. All right, looks like we're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's uh, quite a bit to leveling up a character, and I hope this helps you, uh, you know, understand how to level up a cleric better. So if you want to, feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you enjoy what you're watching, please feel free to hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And if you want to try a cleric, a fighter, a monk, any other class in D&D 5e on my website at tabletopping.net, I have over 840 character sheets. Every level, every class, every archetype on the same very three-page PDF format. So you can download them to your phone, to your tablet, to your PC, print them off. Take them to a game, try it out. Try all of them out. Anyways, have a good one, everybody, and I'll see you for the next video.